apostolic fervor, and a protector of orphans. Selections from the teachings of St. Herman of Alaska from the Little Russian Philokalia, Volume 3, St. Herman of Alaska. Apostolic Fervor Oh, here enraptured in spirit, in spite of all the shortness of time, I will snatch a short minute to relate some narratives of the missionaries' travels and apostolic fervor. Finding myself between fair weather and foul, between joy and tedium, between sufficiency and insufficiency, satiety and hunger, warmth and coldness, in all my sorrows I find something that cheers me when I hear conversations between the brethren about their preaching and about their dividing up for this various regions among themselves, especially the discussion between Hieromonks Makari and Juvenali, for they set out around Kodiak too, in the smallest little boats of hide, despite all the sea's dangers, and Father Archimandrite Yosef Bolotov remained with us, as if with little children in the harbor. And so these hieromonks extended their thoughts yet further. Once when taking a stroll in our harbor, when I, sinful one, happened to be among them, we climbed a little hill toward the southern side, sat down facing the ocean, and among other things began to speak as to which of us should go where to preach, for the time was then at hand for the departure of the ships on which they had to travel. And then an argument broke out between them, which for me, humble one, was comforting and joyful. On Kukovsky's maps of the north, it is indicated that along a certain river Russians live. Among us there are different rumors of them, about which we then recalled in our discussion, wishing somehow to see them. Father Makari began to speak. According to my intention, if it please God, when I shall be in the Aleutian Islands, in all propriety I should go also to Alaska, the mainland, to which place the Alaskans have already called me to. And as that side is nearer those Russians, I shall find means somehow to learn something more certain about them. But Father Juvenali, having heard about Alaska, and in his zeal not allowing the other to speak further, hastened to say to him, Alaska in the whole belongs to my part, and so I beg you to yield to me and not offend me in this. Since the ship now is setting out for Yakutan, I shall have to begin preaching from the south, and proceeding along the ocean toward the north, and going round the Kenai Inlet, I shall absolutely have to go by way of Alaska to go out to this harbor. Hearing this, Father Makari became shrouded in despondency, and having assumed a sorrowful air, said with feeling, No, Father, don't hem me in with this. You yourself know that the Aleutian chain of islands adjoins Alaska, and so it absolutely belongs to my part, and from there the whole northern shore. But as for you, if you please, the southern part of America is sufficient for your whole lifetime. And I, lowly one, hearing such a debate, went from joy to rapture. Protector of Orphans After Father Herman settled on Spruce Island, in the first years there was an inundation or tidal wave, it must have been from an earthquake, and the people, residents of the island, in fear let the elder know of it. He had come from his cell to the home of his pupils, where every Sunday he served the hours, there being no chapel or church. Having taken up an icon of the Mother of God from its place, he brought it out to the silt bank, and placing the icon at the spot to which the water had risen the last time, he began to pray to God. And when he had finished praying, he informed those present that they should not be afraid, saying that above and beyond this spot where the holy object had been placed, the sea would not go which indeed came to pass. This has been confirmed by those who heard of this happening. And when it is necessary to carry the icon back, after instructing the people, Father Herman is said to have told Sophia Vlasova, who was already in charge of the girl pupils of his orphanage, that in case there should ever be again such a rising of the sea, then this icon should be placed on the silt bank, and he promised that the sea would not go beyond this spot.
This icon is to be found to this day on Spruce Island, called New Valam. Spiritual Power I was 30 years old when I met Father Herman. Here it should be said that I was brought up in the Naval Corps, knew many sciences and read much, but unfortunately, of the science of sciences, that is, God's law, I scarcely understood the surface, and that theoretically, without applying it to my life, and I was only in name a Christian, while in soul and in deed I was a free thinker, a deist, as are nearly all who are brought up in the military corps and in public institutions. How unfortunate that no attention is given this, that God's law is everywhere taught superficially, even in the seminaries. Yes, and even from the theological academies there come out students, even masters, who are very learned, but do not have an active faith in their heart, and thus do not live in a Christian way. All the more did I fail to recognize the divineness and sanctity of our religion, in that I had read many atheist writings of Voltaire and other philosophers of the 18th century. Father Herman immediately noticed this and wished to convert me. But this was not easy. I had to be convinced, to be shown the sanctity of our religion and therefore there was required much time, knowledge, and the ability to speak well and convincingly. To my great amazement, the simple, uneducated monk, Father Herman, being inspired by grace, spoke and argued so wisely, powerfully, and convincingly that, it seems to me, no kind of learnedness and earthly wisdom could withstand his words. In actual fact, Father Herman had a great innate intelligence and sound thinking, had read many spiritual patristic books, and most important, he had the grace of God. But since in a short winter's day I had no time at all to devote myself to him, he therefore came to me every day for evening tea, and sometimes also for dinner, and we conversed with him until midnight, and sometimes after. He never stayed for the night. Neither rain nor snow nor storm kept the zealous elder from visiting me and returning alone at midnight a half mile. He came to me regularly every day in an old riasa without a coat. I warmed him with tea, and I conversed with him without ceasing. On God's law, on eternity, on the salvation of the soul, on Christian life, and other things. A sweet discourse flowed from his mouth in an unceasing, enthralling torrent. Then, at midnight, or after, the elder went home alone with his staff. In every kind of storm and cold weather, no one accompanied him on the slippery, rocky path, but angels accompanied him and supported him. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Psalm 90, 11. And Christian love warmed him, with which he was penetrated for the salvation of his neighbor. By such constant conversations, and by the prayers of the holy elder, the Lord completely converted me to the true path, and I became a real Christian. For all this, I am obliged to Father Herman. He is my true benefactor. Pride St. Herman wrote, During the spring of 1820, You sent me two books so that I could tell you my opinion of the author, but at that time I did not manage to look at them. Footnote. This unnamed author, from the description given here, was perhaps St. Simon, or one of the other prophetic socialist philosophers, predecessors of Marx, whose writings were as popular among the Russian and European intelligentsia in the early 19th century as Voltaire's and others had been a little earlier. But having read them later, I saw that he, having flown high above the clouds in the pride of Western thinking, includes himself in the number of the prophets, and thinks that through his high learning and calculations he can likewise write as the prophets wrote on the condition of governments. Wondrous, and most wondrous indeed, how pride blinds one. He says that his writings may not please everyone, that some may ridicule, and he does not see that he has ridiculed himself first of all. He thinks that he affirms the truth, but he quarrels with himself and with Holy Scripture. 
It is boring to speak more of him, but you can see from these few words my opinion of him. A person who may not know the truth solidly should by all means avoid such books. Humility. St. Herman writes, In all my life here, from my own Russians, I have seen more of scorn and reproach and mockery, to which I have already become accustomed. And from such custom, I think that in actual fact, my lowliness is such.